Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now part of what makes PC gaming great is cheap game keys for older titles. I must have bought about 20 game keys over the past couple of months and it's cost me no more than £30. Some of these games are ones I've been meaning to play for years and others I just completely missed when they came out. One such example is the game I'm playing today. I actually had no idea just how much of a big deal this one was, and still is, until I started looking into why it feels so great to play despite coming out in 2005. I mean, there have been papers written and lectures given on this game, not to mention numerous retrospective videos made, and I hate to be that guy, but when something is seemingly universally loved, I'm always the person that just can't see what all the fuss is about, but not in this case. This is Fear, a psychological horror game that was way ahead of its time, both visually and in terms of AI. My usual method of dealing with on-screen enemies includes identifying their position, hiding behind something solid, and then aiming at where I'm pretty certain they're going to pop their head up from. In fear, however, this quickly backfired as I found that some enemies rushed me, some tried to flank me, and others literally jumped through windows to try and get me. You know that episode of The Simpsons where Principal Skinner just walks like through the river to get to Bart like an unstoppable Terminator? It's like that. It feels like the enemies in fear need to get to you, not just that they want to. While it's fair to say that the graphics do look outdated by today's standards, the volumetric lighting, soft shadows and dark environments mean that this is still very effective at being creepy. It's the sort of horror that makes you go all cold and shivery rather than the sort that makes you jump across your room or throw your keyboard and mouse across the desk. If any of the aforementioned factors were subpar, then fear wouldn't have stood the test of time so well. This perfectly encapsulates the notion of the saying, your eyes are playing tricks on you. Thanks to the player character's own shadow, you'll swear you've seen something that might not have been there, but other times a smaller silhouette will sweep across the screen or appear on a wall next to you and you'll think, well, time to call it a day, as you remove the entirety of the game files from your hard drive and never play it again. During the brief moments that I spent not being scared of my own outline, I was able to notice and appreciate other things that make this feel like a far newer game than it is, like the water effects, for example. Now even I can't spend more than a few minutes talking about how good water looks, but if you think this looks convincing in 2022, imagine what people thought 17 years ago. The way it ripples and reacts is borderline mesmerising. All of this did come at a price almost two decades ago of course, while the game could run on a wide range of hardware if you managed your expectations, even higher end cards of the time benefited from the soft shadow setting remaining disabled. Here is how a couple of older top tier cards handled the game in the benchmark at an old school resolution in pairing with a retro system. So you might think that in comparison and despite using the highest available options, a modern gaming PC like my i5-12400 and RTX 3050 combo would be able to hit a much higher frame rate than what you're currently seeing. Now don't get me wrong, the performance is fine and 80 FPS is nothing to complain about, but a 2005 game should surely do better than this, right? My initial thoughts were that the game couldn't utilise the extra hardware because it didn't know how. After all, this game came out when single core processors were the norm and graphics cards had megabytes of VRAM, not gigabytes. It's clear from the MSI Afterburner overlay that neither the CPU or GPU are doing much at all. The i5 is sitting at around 10% usage and the 3050 at around 30% a lot of the time, though this does increase. I did think that maybe the soft shadow options were causing some sort of problem, after all I had read about their demanding nature, and we even get a warning telling us that this is a high end feature, but I'm pretty sure that these days high end with this game would probably refer to something that's at least a GTX 750 Ti, and my theory just didn't make sense considering the reported low hardware usage. After a couple more minutes of contemplation, I decided to head over to PC Gaming Wiki 
which is often my first go-to site for any problems I have regarding older games, and sure enough there was a high FPS patch listed on Fear's wiki page. Increasing the FPS is as simple as downloading a .dll file and extracting it to the game's directory. There are also other patches available such as sound quality and text scaling fixes. Of course I didn't realise that the high frame rate patch existed before recording all of the previous gameplay, but here is how the game runs now. It is a night and day difference, and this is essential to anyone playing on a higher than 60Hz monitor because without it, the game seems to max out at around 80 to 90 FPS at least with the hardware I'm using. Don't get me wrong, this does still play fine and feel fine, so if you want to fire it up out of the box so to speak then you can do so without making any modifications, and you'll still have a good time with Fear in 2022. It is nice to be able to run the game in line with how other titles from almost 20 years ago performed though. That's all for this one then, I hope you've enjoyed this retrospective look back at Fear, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing how it runs with modern hardware in 2022. I'd certainly recommend purchasing it, not necessarily through Steam if you have to buy all of the games in the bundle, but perhaps elsewhere that offers cheaper CD keys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.